Tessa and Matthew hurry inside the TARDIS as the Doctor closes the door behind them. The Doctor reaches the console and presses a couple of buttons and slightly opens the viewing hatch. They can't see where this noise is coming from, but it is very close to the TARDIS. The weird thing is, the doctor noticed the cloister bell had weirdly went quiet. Now normally, when there's a TARDIS, the cloister bell continues to ring until said threat is gone or no longer near. But the TARDIS was acting weird. The doctor had noticed this when she had tried to dematerialize. Now, as she pressed the buttons, to dematerialize the TARDIS it made a weird noise <laughs> Now normally a sound like that wouldn't kind of bother the Doctor but she wanted to exactly find out what exactly the noise was until she realised to her horror that they were still stranded in Dark Valley. Now, the doctor before has had the TARDIS not been able to take off from a location, but it's never been this serious before. The doctor looks at her, Tessa. And Tessa looks back, and immediately they know subconsciously that something's wrong. So Tessa tries to press another couple of buttons on another third console under the instruction of the doctor. And those buttons aren't working either. So Matthew tries on his side. Ugh. Well, I suppose if those buttons aren't working, Doc, then I'll try these ones over here. Now the Doctor looks at Matthew. How does he know which buttons to press? She ponders over this for a while until he suddenly peeks up. Yeah, I know what buttons to press. I got bored one night in the TARDIS and I basically went to my bedroom down the hall there to the left and I basically memorised the TARDIS flight manual. Some weird language but I was able to understand it because the TARDIS translated it for me. There is a passage in the later, later half of the book, Doc, that tells you what to do in this kind of situation. But you're not going to like what it says. The Doctor looks kind of confused at this. Um, she, takes it to, she takes the manual out of his hands and begins to read what is, it says basically on the said page that he told her about. Now, the doctor reads this aloud so she can properly take it in, because obviously she's never had to really rely on reading the manual to 
of Flight of the Tardis because she thought that all time lovers would know how to properly fly one of these things. Um, there was a noise again. All these weird noises that the doctor was hearing. Aim. 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 The doctor hadn't heard, the, heard this before. She quickly ran around the console, flicking switches, pulling the monitor around. Just the basic dino diagnostic stuff that a time lord would do in their TARDIS. Something ser seriously was going wrong with the TARDIS. Now, she had to think, was this happening because they were stranded in Dark Valley? She remembered when she was a child, back when she was a, a male Time Lord, that when she was learning about the ins and outs of these time machines that they were building that if they're ever stuck anywhere that they can't get out of for a look of trying everything the TARDIS makes a set amount of noises that shouldn't be ignored she remembers back to when her and the master were kind of mucking about in the Gallifrey Academy Library She came across a book that the master told her to not basically worry about because in his own words all the stuff we're learning we won't actually have to use when we're out there exploring the universe when we're in later cycles of regeneration, we might forget it all, but then that's the fun of going around controlling the universe. But then back then, the Doctor was worried about the Master. They had been friends for quite a while before Gallifrey Academy, and he had never said anything like this before. So the doctor made uh, made a point of noting that if she was ever in a situation that she didn't quite like, she would remember how she felt when the master had come away with what he had in the Gallifrey, the Gallifrey Academy, vast library. Just at that moment, the viewing screen had went completely dark. Nothing could be seen out, but the Taurus was ready to run something dangerous in place. So it couldn't dematerialize. The dark sludge rock like creature slowly engulfed the outside of the TARDIS, gently kind of reined back off it as it tried to crack through the defense mechanism shield that the TARDIS had put up. But that wasn't going to stop this creature. It had enveloped the entire protection bubble the TARDIS had thrown up. 